Good morning, Enid. It is a cold 17 degrees, and if you really want to know, there's a wind chill of 8 degrees this morning on this Thursday, December 8th. Hello, I'm Steve Keim. Grab a cup of coffee or two and uh, join us uh, for the next 30 minutes of news, weather, sports, and we've got a special Enid guest with us today. Coming to you live this morning to over 14,000 homes in the Enid area, and then we're live streaming around the globe at enidtv.org on the Internet. This is Good Morning Enid. It's time to rise and shine. Good morning, Nina. Thank you again for joining us on this cold Thursday, December 8th. If you're planning your day out, uh, again, a wind chill right now of 8 degrees, but the high today is going to be 36, kind of a partly cloudy type day today. So December has fully arrived, and some winter weather has fully arrived. We're, we're glad that you're with us. Well, real quick, let's look at some of the statewide temperatures. If you think it's a cold 17 degrees here in the Enid area, look at Buffalo at 16. You have to go all the way down to uh, I-35 and Texas border at Thackerville, 29 degrees. So, you know, that's a typical map in uh, December. It's always colder in the northwest. In Rose, Oklahoma, 20. In Krebs, if you've ever been to Krebs, great Italian restaurant in that area, 27 degrees there this morning. So those are some of the statewide temps. Oh, before I forget, I want to say hi to some of our friends at Stewart Nissan. I know we have a lot of folks at the Commons and also at uh, Greenbrier. And I'm trying to think of the other retirement home that watch us every Thursday. We appreciate uh, you watching us. And also we know some folks are over there at uh, Stuart Nissan. So we say good morning, Nina, to you as well. Uh, the three-day forecast, if you're planning um, to do something on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and need to know if you need one coat or two coats, as you can see, Friday, it's not going to be too bad. It's going to be sunny and high in the upper 30s. But look at those lows in the 20s. So it's, uh, it's obvious that it's uh, December weather. Looks a little bit better for Saturday. I like those 50s and kind of tolerate the 50 degrees and then all the way up to 57 on Sunday. So that's what it looks like for the next three days. It's 7.33. Thank you for joining us. We, we really appreciate the opportunity to come to you every Thursday morning to provide you news, weather, and sports, and Enid information. We have a special guest. Uh, Commissioner Ron Jansen is in the house. He'll be with us in just a moment to give us an update on what the commissioners are up to. But until then, we need to go to the Bowtie Guy, and that's Derek Silas for the Oklahoma Minute. State Attorney General Scott Pruitt to head the Environmental Protection Agency. Governor Fallon will select his replacement if he accepts the position. State Treasurer Ken Miller reports that tax collections from oil and natural gas production continue to increase, although sales and income tax receipts remain low. FEMA declares damages in Payne County, Oklahoma, not above minor damage and therefore will not receive federal emergency dollars. However, class action litigation has been filed against energy companies in state district court. This weekend, the annual Candy Cane Cash event will be Saturday at 9 a.m. on the courthouse lawn with 15,000 in cash prizes. And tomorrow, the Thunder will take on the Rockets at 7 p.m. in Oklahoma City. It will air on ESPN. And on this day in history, in 1941, as America Pacific, Pacific Fleet lays in ruin at Pearl Harbor, the United States declares war on Japan. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to you, Steve. And thank you, Derek, for reminding us about uh, the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor uh, yesterday. I want to say hi to our good friend George Bellman. George is, uh, watches this quite often, and George is a World War II vet and um, served in the Pacific Theater. And uh, so good morning, George. Hope you're doing well. 
And good morning, Nina. Thank you for joining us. And for all of our veterans, thank you for your service. Thank you for uh, uh, the sacrifices that you've made to uh, allow us to do what we do and have the freedoms that we have. So thank you very much. Well, last Friday night was a tough night for Pond Creek, for my Morrison Wildcats. Uh, my Perry Maroons didn't even make it to the playoffs. And also Chisholm. Longhorns did a great job, but uh, we want to say congratulations to those uh, three teams. Um, they got beat. They went all year, and then they finally got beat at the last. But they got to the playoffs. So congratulations again to Pond Creek, to Chisholm, and to Morrison Wildcats for uh, their Friday Night Lights high school football. They did a great job. Congratulations. If you have a birthday, I know one of the retirement homes sends us uh, birthdays quite often. If somebody you know or you got a picture of a Christmas tree or you got your dog wrapped up in Christmas lights, anything that you want for us to air here on um, Good Morning Enid, you can send it to gme at enid.org. You can see the email address on the screen, gme at enid.org. Speaking of birthdays, AJ's mom, her name is Lottie. I know a Lottie. This is my second Lottie that I know. Happy birthday, Lottie. I think she's a young 88 today. There she is. So that's AJ's mom. And uh, Lottie Wells, we wish you the best. I understand you've had some health challenges uh, recently, so we hope you're back to full strength. But we want to say happy birthday to Lottie. Okay, well, it's 736. We're moving along on this cold Thursday morning, holding steady at 17 degrees. We need to find out what's happening, and the person to do that is Heather Hughes. Good morning, Enid. It's great to be here this morning. Well, this holiday season, there's lots to do in Enid, starting with this weekend. Sleigh Rides with Santa um, is going to be at Benny's Barnhorse Therapy Ranch. Um, they are located at 4914 East Roop, so that's southeast of town. Um, and this is going to be December 10th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And uh, this is also a, a fundraising event, so be sure to come out and um, help support the Horse Therapy Ranch. Then the um, NOC Mackey Planetarium is presenting the Star of Bethlehem. There's going to be two showings, both on December 14th, one at 6.30 p.m. and one at 8 p.m. They're going to be recreating the sky over Babylon from over 2,000 years ago. Um, there's no admission charge for this event, um, but they are going to be accepting donations of food um, for loaves and fishes. And then, um, also in December, Scotty McCurry, American Idol winner, and country singer is going to be at the Chisholm Trail Expo Center on December 17th at 7.30 p.m., and that is a Saturday. Um, tickets are going to be $30, $40, and $50. Um, you can get your tickets at the Expo Center at box office or at ChisholmTrailExpo.com. And lastly, moving into 2017, it's the 21st annual KNID AgriFest. This is also at the Chisholm Trail Expo Center. Um, two different days, January 13th, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and then again on the 14th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Parking and admission for this event are free, um, it, and this is the North, Northwest Oklahoma's largest farm show with over 250 booths. Um, for more information on events going on in Enid, you can check out visitenid.org. And that's what's happening. Back to you, Steve. What's happening with Heather? As you notice, Heather's here every other week. We have Brooke Bodie that uh, Brooke is back that gives us the update on all the events at the event center, uh, CNBC Center, I should say. So anyway, welcome back, Heather. Uh, the school menu, as you're getting out the door, trying to get everybody to, to uh, school today, this is what the menu looks like for Thursday and Friday. Again, that's pre-K up to the fifth grade. Today, we'll get some beef tacos and just typical compliments to all that, lettuce, cheese, ranch, beans, mixed fruit, and milk. Friday looks pretty good. Barbecue ribs, onion rings, sign me up. Applesauce, carrot cake, and good old milk. So that's the, that's the menu. So very good. Okay, again, we've got a very special guest to keep us updated on what's going on. Good morning, Enid. It's uh, Thursday, December 8th. And again, Holden Stadium at 17 degrees. The wind chilled is around 8 degrees. For our pilots, we always say good morning to them because they're always watching Good Morning Enid. Our winds are out of the west, northwest, around 6 miles per hour and kind of stay that way today with a high around 36. Enough of the weather. We need to find out what's going on with our city commission. And it's time for One on One with Jamara. Welcome 
to One on One with Jamara. Our special guest this morning is Commissioner Ron Jansen. Good morning, Commissioner Jansen. Happy to be here. Thank you for joining us. We want to know a little information on what's happening in INI. And we want to begin by asking you about the colleague project. What updates can you provide regarding okay. that project? If, uh, if people have been following us, uh, you know, on our, our meetings, we now televise, uh, you know, both our uh, early session as mm -hmm. well as the voting session. Uh, we've had the people from Garver come and give us updates on, on how the project's coming along. But what we've done now is we've completed phase one of the mm -hmm. project and we're getting ready to start phase two. With phase two is going to be really important to allow us to determine how much this project's going to actually cost and, and how long it's going to take to complete because in phase two we're going to get more specifically into the design of the project as well as actually get some people out on the ground to deciding exactly where the pipeline is going to go and uh, what kind of uh, problems we're going to encounter in, in bearing a 70 mile pipeline. Right, right. So uh, we're still a couple of years out from actually moving any dirt, but uh, the, uh, the project is moving along well and hopefully by the end of phase two, uh, we'll have a pretty good idea of how much we're going to get built with the amount of money we've got to build it. Right, and if people want to know more information, I believe they can visit our City yes. of Vinny webpage. And got, got very good information on there. Right, and they can uh, find out video presentations from Garver Engineering and follow up. Yeah, what's well, one thing place. too that I might mention in our, if you happen to watch our meeting the other evening, mm -hmm. uh, we did appoint uh, the Sales Tax Oversight Committee. That's a, a part of this process that they're going to, uh, they're a citizen committee mm -hmm. made up of uh, representatives from each ward and, and a representative of the council and also appointed by the mayor. They're going to meet once or twice a year to uh, oversee the, how the money is spent and, and to give the citizens some assurance that uh, all of the money that we collect in the sales tax, the special sales tax, will go to build the pipeline. All right. All right. Well, that's that's really good to know. Now, um, what do you consider to be the biggest achieve, achievements the city uh, commission had accomplished in 2016? Uh, once again, we have to fall back on the Call Lake project. Mm -hmm. uh, this this is something, actually, either city commission has been talking about possibly getting water from Call Lake for probably 25 years at least, and finally, in 2016, uh, the decision was made that this is the direction that we were going to go. And, and we got the sales tax uh, election uh, set, and it was uh, passed by the mm -hmm. citizens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Call Lake has kind of dominated everything else. Uh, we do still have a number of development projects going on. Uh, we're still in the process of getting a downtown hotel. I think some people have possibly given up on that, but <laughs> we've got a developer that's very interested in building a downtown hotel. And I'm hoping that uh, fairly early in this next year, we're going to get started on building a downtown hotel. We've got several other developments. We've got some big road projects going. Mm -hmm. Willow Road's going to be widened in, in 2017. Yeah. So a lot of things going on in the city of Enid. Yeah, there's a lot of movement, so that's really yes. good. It is really good. Every, I think there's not a place in town that you drive and don't see development. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, well, so, that's a good thing. Yes, it is. It's a good thing. Um, now, this is the second time you've served as a commissioner. And we want to know what qualities make for a, a great city councilor. Whenever, whenever anybody asks me why I uh, filed to be a member of the city council I, I, and, and want to know, you know what, what a city commissioner ought to do, I tell them that you have to enjoy aggravation <laughs> in order to serve on the city commission because, uh, you know, a lot of things happen. Uh, most people go on the city commission with some pretty specific ideas about what they want to accomplish. And one of the things you learn after being on the commission for a little while is that everything that you want to do takes about twice as long as you think it should mm -hmm. and costs about twice as much. And uh, consequently, uh, you know, it can be uh, kind of frustrating from t at times, but uh, it's still something that I enjoy doing. Uh, I've also told people that uh, even if you don't get your way on the city commission, at least you've got an opportunity to have your say. Yeah. 
Uh, if you set out the audience, they can ignore you. If you're setting up at the front, they can't. Yeah, and uh, we were discussing this just before the show that uh, the closing for, for people that were interested in, in becoming a commissioner was yesterday. Yes. Um, so if you were following that uh, information, it's a little bit late to mention on the show, but anybody can serve, right? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. you, you got to live in the ward, though. We've got, oh, yes. We have ward voting here that... Uh, mm -hmm. Is, uh, it didn't exist the first time that I ran for the city council. It used to have to run citywide back in the 80s when I served the first time. Okay. But uh, in, in the 1990s, they changed the city charter to allow, actually to require that, uh, that you not only live in the ward, uh, but uh, you, know, you used to have to live in the ward, but now only the people in the ward can vote for you. Okay, okay. So it changed quite a bit yes. since, <laughs> since the last time you served. And we're going to have an election in February, so... Okay. Something to watch for. Going to be some campaigning going on in the next month or two. Right. That'll be interesting. <laughs> now, uh, what topics do the commissioners face in the upcoming year, 2017? Uh, like I said, I think I touched on a couple of things. One mm -hmm. thing, we, we want, uh, you know, the Call Lake project, uh, we're going to have regular updates on that. It's, it's going to be an ongoing project for at least the next three or four years. And... Uh, We've also got some development projects we've been working on that we actually uh, hope to see some uh, something happen uh, in, in 17. So, you know, keep an eye on us. Uh, we meet the first and third Tuesdays of every month. Yeah. Our meetings are televised. And if you want to know what the city commission is doing, you can watch uh, our complete meetings now. Right, right. Right here on the Enid Television Network. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Now, uh, Commissioner Jansen, if people from your ward wants to contact you, they have questions about city projects, um, how can they reach you? I, uh, my cell phone number is uh, on, the, uh, on the website. Mm -hmm. They can pick that up. Also, I'm listed in the phone book if they want to call me. Uh, any, anytime they uh, want to share something with me or contact me, I'm, I'm available. All right, and, and again, you can visit the City of Enid uh, webpage at www.enid.org, and you can find um, more information on, on what's going on in the city. You can, you can view previous uh, commission meetings, study sessions, and get a hold of your ward. Yes. Um, I believe there's a ward map that you can find out exactly who you need to contact, so that's, that's really and beneficial. I, I want to encourage people to contact their city commissioner. I think each of the city commissioners would be delighted to get a call from you and uh, hear what your uh, thoughts and, uh, and ideas are. So don't, don't be reluctant to call, worry about uh, you, know, you might be uh, taking somebody away from something that, uh, that's more important because as far as I'm concerned, and I think most of the commissioners, uh, we, we want to know what our constituents are concerned about. Right. Right. Well, Commissioner Jensen, thank you very much for taking time to meet with us this morning. Thank we you. appreciate your time thank and you. your service. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching One on One with Jamara. Now, let's go back to Steve. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner Jamara. 748, good morning, Enid, on this Thursday, December 8th, holding steady at 17 degrees. I heard a phrase or a term that I hadn't heard in a long time. Phone book. When's the last time you heard phone book? You know, it, it's interesting. Uh, matter of fact, I share a story. The mayor came in my office the other day and goes, Steve, you got a phone book? I need to look up this number. And it's just, phone book? Oh, it's those yellow looking things. You know, I'd forgotten what those were. So anyway, commissioner lets you know how you can contact him and we encourage you to do so. And of course, you can go to our website, which is simply enid.org. You can go under uh, the commissioners under the government uh, column, if you will, and you can see the bios of each one of the, the commissioners and their wards and what they represent. And um, so all that information is there for you. So, well, if you plan it today, uh, it's going to be a cold day. High today, 36. Right now, the wind chill is at 8. Winds are out of the west, northwest at 6. So bundle the kids up and uh, take care of your pets if they're outside. Uh, find some sunshine for them to lay in because it is a cold day today. Well, if you missed the news the first time around this morning, uh, we have the bow tie guy, Derek Silas. He's back with the Oklahoma Minute. President-elect Donald Trump is named Time Magazine's Person of the Year, and he picks Oklahoma State Attorney General Scott Pruitt, head of EPA. 
Governor Fallon will select his replacement if he accepts the position. State Treasurer Ken Miller reports that tax collections from oil and natural gas production continue to increase, although sales and income tax receipts remain low. FEMA declares damages in Payne County, Oklahoma, not above minor damage and therefore will not receive federal emergency dollars. However, class action litigation has been filed against energy companies in state district court. The annual Candy Cane Cash event will be this Saturday at 9 a.m. on the courthouse lawn with 15000 in cash prizes. Also, earlier, there will be a dash, 5K dash. Tomorrow, the Oklahoma City Thunder will take on the Houston Rockets at 7 p.m. in Oklahoma City. It will air on ESPN. And on this day in history, in 1941, as America's Pacific Fleet lay in ruins at Pearl Harbor, the United States declares war on Japan. And in 1980, John Lennon, a former member of the Beatles, the rock group that transformed popular music in the 1960s, is shot and killed by an obsessed fan in New York City. And in 1993, the North American Free Trade Agreement is signed into law by President Bill Clinton. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to you, Steve. Thank you, Derek. I don't know if it's me or not. Uh, I don't know if this happens to you, but man, I just can't believe how quick these, these months go, these years go. It doesn't seem possible on some of these dates uh, with the John Lennon um, incident, things of this nature. Wow, calendar really moves along. Well, I'd like to remind you, at 8 o'clock this morning, we've got Roy uh, Walgren with uh, Marine Corps Toys for Tots. He will be our 8 o'clock show, and so you want to keep that in mind. You see the graphic right there. Uh, sit down with Roy, and we talked here in the Ina Television Network studios about the work, the Marine Corps Toys for Tots, what they're all about, how you can help, and uh, the great service they do, and that show is coming up at 8 o'clock. We'll take a moment right now to take a look at the three-day forecast, as we did earlier today. As you're planning your weekend, you know, Friday doesn't look too bad. It's going to be a little bit warmer than today, that's for sure. Going to have more sunshine for Friday. Saturday could be a windy day, but it gets up into the low 50s. Sunday looks the best day yet if you're planning to do something. But look at those winds. They're out of the west around 20 miles per hour. So Sunday could be um, rather windy, and uh, at least it's in the 50-degree range, so that's what it looks like. So keep that in mind. That's the weather forecast. Well, it's the holiday season, Christmas season. Here we are at December 8th. We have a special uh, Christmas greeting from our city manager, Gerald Gilbert, and let's look at that right now. Hello, I'm Gerald Gilbert, city manager for the city of Enid. Thank you for watching Enid Television Network. On behalf of all city of Enid employees, let me take this opportunity to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Gerald. Appreciate that. It's just hard to imagine where uh, Christmas is on a Sunday, so we're just a few weeks away. Okay, we have Heather Hughes. She's back with us here at the uh, Good Morning Nina Show, and uh, we need to find out what's happening with Heather, and we'll do that right now. Good morning, Enid. <clears throat> it's great to be here this morning. There's lots to do here in Enid this holiday season, starting with this weekend at Benny's Barn Horse Therapy Ranch. Um, they are doing a fundraiser and it's sleigh rides with Santa. So holiday festivities for the whole family on December 10th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. They are located at 4914 East Route, and that is uh, southeast of town. $10 admission and $1 hot dogs. And next, the NOC Mackey Planetarium is presenting the Star of Bethlehem on December 14th, and there's gonna be two showings, one at 6.30 p.m. and one at 8 p.m. The show is called The Heavens Declare the Glory of God, and they're going to be recreating the sky over Babylon 2,000 years ago. No admission charge, but they are accepting donations of food for loaves and fishes. And next, also in December, Scotty McCurry, winner of American Idol, is going to be at the Chisholm Trail Expo Center December 17th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets run from $30, $40 to $50, and you can get those at the Expo Center box office or at ChisholmTrailExpo.com. And lastly, moving into 2017 is the 21st annual KNID AgriFest. This is also at the Chisholm Trail Expo Center on January 13th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and again on the 14th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Parking and admission are free, and this is the Northwest Oklahoma's largest farm show with over 250 booths. And that's what's happening. Back to you, Steve. 
Very good. Thank you, Heather, for that update. I tell you, it's just amazing when you see what things that are going on at the CNBC Center and just within our community. Uh, you don't have to go to Tulsa or really Oklahoma City anymore for a lot of things. Uh, you go to their website and you see all the, the concerts. They had the Cirque uh, Dreams holidays this week, and that was on Monday. They've uh, Just amazing some of the events uh, that are coming right here in Enid, so pretty exciting times. Holding steady at 17 degrees, a, a burr wind chill of 8 degrees, but the high today is going to be 36. Well, 249-4910 is a number that we want you to hang on to for the holiday season. Um, the other night at the city commission meeting, the animal control officer mentioned there were several pets that needed to be adopted. They had a lot of dogs and they had a lot of cats. They brought in one puppy dog named Wally. He needed a home and he was well-mannered. And anyway, 249-4910 is the number to call. And let's take a moment right now to uh, look at the pet promo and just remind us about uh, the importance of adopting a pet. like this are found and brought to Enid Animal Control every day. All of these animals are in need of good homes. Please consider adopting a dog or a cat from Enid Animal Shelter. Call us at 249-4910 or come down to see us at 1200 South 10th Street. Good morning, Enid. It's 756, almost 57. It's been a quick 30 minutes. Hope you enjoyed our program today with our news, weather, and sports. Again, the weather forecast for you. High today is going to be around 36 degrees. But currently, we have a wind chill of 8 degrees. Winds are out of the west, northwest at 6 miles per hour. Again, 249-4910 is the number to call. And I was going to ask, did, I'm sorry, AJ, as I'm looking away, if we were, we were going to run a... We can run something if you're in. Okay. Let's do that right now. We've got, um, well, forgive me, with live TV, you got 47 things going on in your mind. And um, thank you. <laughs> Julia Brown. We'll listen to her right now. So let's talk about why you should never respond to emails asking for personal information. Well, number one, companies will never ever ask for account information, credit card numbers, or passwords in an email. If you need to find out the legitimacy of the email, you need to go to their website and you need to find their number and call them personally. These types of emails that you get in, they're called social engineering and they're part of a social engineering campaign. It's the art of manipulating, influencing, deceiving anyone to get any kind of information that benefits them. They'll use your phone, they'll use email, they'll use snail mail, they'll even direct contact you. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book and they require very little technical skills and people still fall for it. But they're really going after only one thing and that's your information. About 97% of online attacks are using some type of social engineering scheme. This means that it doesn't matter what kind of system you're on. Doesn't matter if you're on your cell phone, doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or a Windows, everybody's vulnerable. You have to remember that the final line of defense is going to be you. And the rule to remember is think before you click. Good morning, Andy. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday, December 8th. Appreciate you. Make it a great day.